So in this problem, we have a smooth hollow hemisphere of radius A and center O is fixed so that its rim is in a horizontal plane. A smooth uniform rod of mass m kilos is in equilibrium with one end A resting on the inside of the hemisphere and the point C on the rod being in contact with the rim of the hemisphere. The rod of length L meters is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal as shown in the diagram. Part A. Explain why the reaction force between the rod and the hemisphere at point A acts through O. So the reason for this is that the hemisphere is smooth. So because it is smooth, the rod um, could move in either direction and that the direction of its motion will be round the outside of your hemisphere, or round the inside of your hemisphere rather. So the line of action that's perpendicular to that will be the normal, which is going to go through the centre of your circle. So it is because the hemisphere is smooth that the normal reaction will be perpendicular to the direction of motion. And the direction of motion is around the inside of your hemisphere. And perpendicular to that is the normal, which will go through the centre. Part B. Draw a diagram to show the forces acting on the rod. OK, so let's start off then. Well, we've been told in part A uh, that the reaction force is going to be going through O. So we can label that on our diagram. So we're going to have a normal reaction force going through O. So what I'll do is I'll just do a dashed line to the origin because that is itself a radius. So this is going to be my normal reaction force, R. OK. Uh, we have the weight of the rod acting vertically downwards. So let's add that on uh, somewhere there, say. And so that will be mg. And we'll also have a normal reaction force here at C because it's in contact with the rim. And that will be perpendicular to the rod. So we'll call that, well I've used R there haven't I, so I'll call that RA and I'll call this RC. And that's perpendicular to the rod. Uh, so they are the forces and while I'm at it I'll just complete that right angle triangle so that's going to be the angle theta. So this is mg cosine theta. And I'll just pop the mg there, and that's mg sine theta. OK. Now, um, so I've done part B here. Let's just label our diagram a little bit more with what we know, uh, because the hemisphere has a radius of A, so this distance is A. So that means that distance is A, because it's another radius. OK, so um, let's label that as RA and this distance of A, OK, to make that clear. Now, if that's A and that's A, this is an isosceles triangle, so that means that that angle must also be theta. So I can split RA up into its components as well. Uh, one that is parallel to the plane, which will be RA cosine theta, and one that is uh, perpendicular to the plane, so RA sine theta. So what I can do is I don't need that angle really there anymore. So this will be RA sine theta, and here is our A cosine theta. Right, OK, so part C, show that L is equal to 4A cosine 2 theta over cosine theta. 
Right, so what I'm going to start with is taking moments, I think. I'm going to take moments about point A. It's in equilibrium, so that's going to be equal to zero. So taking moments about point A, I don't need to worry about RA in this. Uh, we are L over 2, so half L away from the mg cosine theta. And that's going to be going around in a clockwise motion. So minus L over 2 times mg cosine theta. And this distance here, now what is the distance from A to C? Well, I know that the radius is of length R, uh, sorry, is of length A. And if I think about splitting that into two of the same right angle triangles, then this distance here has to be A cosine theta. So that means that distance AC has to be 2A cosine theta. OK, so I can utilise that. So I am 2a cosine theta away from the RC force, which is going around in an anti-clockwise motion. So plus 2a cosine theta times by RC. And that's going to be equal to 0. OK. Now I can divide through by the cosine theta and multiply through by 2. And we're going to get minus L M G plus 4 A R C equals 0. So R C will be L M G over 4 A. Right, OK, so I've got that. Now I'm going to resolve forces. So, you know, when we deal with moments problems, it comes down to taking moments, resolving forces. OK, that's really all we do. So now I'm going to resolve forces, and I'm going to resolve forces uh, perpendicular to the plane first, I think. So, well, perpendicular to uh, the rod. So what have I got? I've got the R A sine theta. Just make that a little bit smaller. Uh, then I've got the take away mg cosine theta. And I've got the plus rc equals 0. OK, uh, so do I want to do anything with that just yet? I think I'll leave that for the moment. Let's now resolve. Uh, parallel to the slope, and I'm going to take uh, up the slope as positive. So I've got the Ra cosine theta. I've got take away Mg sine theta. And that's it, so it equals zero. OK, so that will allow me to rearrange to get Ra. So I'll do that. So Ra is going to be equal to, add the mg sine theta to both sides, divide through by cosine theta. So mg sine theta over cosine theta. So now I've got Ra in terms of sine theta and cosine theta and mg. And I've got the Rc in terms of L, M, G, and A. So I can substitute all of those into this equation here. So therefore, the Ra is mg sine theta over cosine theta. And I'm timesing that by sine theta. Take away mg cosine theta plus the Rc, which is L m g over 4a and that's equal to zero now all three terms have mg involved so i can divide through by mg and 
I can multiply through by cosine theta to get rid of it from the denominator here. I could also multiply through by 4a, but I think by that point I'm probably doing too many steps in one. So I'll divide through by the mg and multiply through by cosine theta. I'll do that in one go. So we'll have sine theta times sine theta left, so sine squared theta. Take away, the mg's gone, I've multiplied through by cosine theta, so I'll have take away cosine squared theta. And over here I'm going to get L cosine theta over 4a equals 0. Now, as you can see here, I've got sine squared take away cosine squared. Now, I know that cosine squared minus sine squared is cosine 2 theta. So what I'll do is I will move the sine squared take away cosine squared over to the other side to make cosine squared theta take away sine squared. So we now have L cosine theta over 4a is equal to cosine of 2 theta, our double angle formula. Multiply it by the 4a. And then divide through by the cosine theta. And I am done, as required.